very pleased to have with us on the program right now, former Congressman Bob Barr. How are you, sir? Good evening. I am doing just great. Uh, we're up here, um, uh, over here at a friend's house near the NRA, where we're having the NRA meeting and uh, having a good cigar and a little bit of good bourbon. Oh, excellent. Well, I'm glad you could join us tonight. And, uh, you know, it's a it's a good night to uh, to kick back and enjoy uh, some victories. There have been some good ones over the past couple of weeks, including in Ohio, where the state Supreme Court, uh, as you say, slapped the hands of local governments that were trying to enforce restrictive anti-gun ordinances. I, I tell you, there have uh, been a number of good decisions over the last couple of years, going back to the Heller decision in D.C. and then the next level, the McDonald decision in uh, in Chicago. You know, and now we're uh, down to uh, some of the state courts, uh, in this case, as you mentioned, the Ohio Supreme Court, uh, you know, standing up and telling uh, these localities that think that just because uh, they say it's better for their citizens uh, not to have uh, firearms, uh, that that trumps the, uh, what the state is doing. And uh, it's nice to see a decision, whether it's in Ohio or some other state, that stands up and says, no, you can't do that. Absolutely. And, you know, and there's a real world reason for uh, the, the statewide firearm preemption laws, despite the fact that uh, gun control groups have been fighting against them. And in the case of Pennsylvania, just encouraging ordinances to uh, or, or encouraging communities to pass ordinances just in violation of the uh, the the uh, state preemption law. But, you know, you look at this, uh, Congressman, and, and if you were to try to drive from Cleveland to Cincinnati without firearm preemption laws, you could be expected to have to know dozens of different municipal codes for every town that you're driving through, or else you're on the risk of turning into a Brian Aiken and, uh, you know, looking at seven years behind bars. That's ridiculous. It, well, it's ridiculous, and, and it's also a way that governments can play a game of gotcha. Uh, and uh, it's, it's absolutely impractical. It's unfair. It's violative of due process and equal protection to say nothing of the uh, fundamental uh, right to keep and bear arms that, uh, that it represents a violation of. Absolutely. So do you think that uh, uh, 2011, looking ahead this year, uh, do you foresee uh, more court cases going our way? I mean, there have been, you know, there was the case in uh, uh, Maryland earlier this week that upheld Maryland's really bad uh, May issue concealed carry laws. It's certainly not 100 percent going uh, the way of gun owners. But do you think we're going to have a good year? I think we'll have a good year. It's not going to be as good as it would have been had uh, Justice Scalia, for example, uh, not gone off on this tangent in the McDonald case and pulled some of the other justices with him to uh, not find that the uh, Chicago ordinance was violative based on the privileges or immunities. Uh, that would have uh, really uh, helped with a lot of these uh, local cases that are going to that are going to now be cropping up. But, you know, notwithstanding the fact that, uh, that the Chicago, uh, McDonald v. City Chicago case was not uh, uh, found based on the right reason, uh, I think we're going to see, uh, you know, we're going to see ups and downs. We're not going to see, as you say, a, a all good decisions. We're not going to have a unanimous record. But I think that it will be a good year, uh, this year in particular. Next year, uh, 2012, I think uh, we may see some uh, some moves on the part of the Obama administration and some of the Democrats in the Congress, the anti-gun folks there, uh, to uh, you know try and pull some uh, tricks uh, for the uh, for the campaign in 2012. But I think 2011 will be a good year. All right, you know, you mentioned 2012. Not only will that be a re-election year, but that'll be when the United Nations holds its. Next big summit, uh, talking about a, a, a small arms treaty, and we'll have to be watching that very closely. I'm very glad you mentioned that. Uh, we talked about that at the NRA board meeting uh, yesterday in our Legislative uh, Affairs Committee, the International Affairs Subcommittee, that uh, one of my heroes, uh, John Bolton, heads up. Uh, there are going to be a series of meetings uh, beginning later uh, this, uh, this winter in New York. Uh, I think February 28th is the first one of the U.N., preparatory committee meetings. They're going to be holding a number of these meetings uh, uh, throughout 2011, uh, looking toward 2012 when they are set to uh, actually begin the formal process of drafting an arms trade treaty, uh, which will be uh, extremely, extremely uh, harmful to our rights here in this country uh, if, in fact, that thing ever goes through. So, we have to be aware not only of what's coming uh, in 2012 with the drafting of that treaty, but all of these preparatory meetings, which will define the parameters of the eventual treaty. Uh, and th those are going to be held 
uh, throughout this year, beginning in uh, February. All right. Uh, I, I've got to ask you as well, Congressman, before we let you go here, uh, there's been so much talk this week uh, about the uh, the reading of the Constitution on the floor of the U.S. House, and a number of individuals have expressed shock and outrage that, that such a thing would be taking place. Uh, Time Magazine even had a piece today by Alex Altman called The Cult of the Constitution. What what do you make of the uh, the professional left freaking out over the reading of the Constitution? It, 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 t- it tells you a lot about the state of uh, constitutional education in this country, that these sort of uh, criticisms can even uh, be, be given any credibility whatsoever. Uh, the problem is starting in our schools, and it works its way up through the professional arena and through the news media and so forth. And what we need to do, which, of course, the NRA has been doing for many, many years, but a lot of other organizations and individuals ought to take up this cause, to begin teaching our children what the Constitution says and what it means. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, and, you know, you're, I, I think you're really onto something here because so many Americans, I mean, clearly when you've got somebody like Ezra Klein of the Washington Post, a guy who, you know, the chattering class in Washington admires and thinks he's a really bright guy, and he says, well, look, the Constitution's more than 100 years old. It's confusing. Uh, what's the point in understanding it? That, that's, that's a really disturbing thing to hear. It is, because it, it, it indicates a, either a complete lack of understanding of what the Constitution was intended to be and, and is by its words, but it also indicates a, 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 an, an ignorance, a deliberate ignorance of what our Constitution uh, is, is to mean. There's nothing at all confusing uh, in the words of the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, uh, or in the words of the, the body of the Constitution itself. Uh, it goes back to one of, one of my uh, uh, you know, one of my great uh, uh, you know, folks that I look to, and that is uh, James Madison when he wrote, and I think it was uh, the Federalist Paper number fifty one, that it's just as important to have and to pay attention to what that Constitution says in order to govern the country as it is to govern the government itself. That Constitution is even more important to place limits on government as it is to provide a framework within which our society can operate. Congressman, it is always such a pleasure to get a chance to talk with you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, look forward to doing this again very soon. Anytime. You just call and Bob Barr says, how high? (laughs) Thank you, sir. Former uh, Representative Bob Barr joining us here on Cam and Company.